threatened and to be really tested like I believe this is going to do. Um, so in a sense, I actually really do see the positive side of that, of getting more clarity about who I am. And perhaps that's true for all of us. Um, but I mean, because I'm not particularly scared, but I recognize that's part of the privilege. You're quite confessional whenever I'm around you. So I'll, <laughs> I'll dip into that again. Uh, yeah. I, I've been finding myself, as you know, because I've written a little bit about it and I've shared this with you. But at the lowest point that I felt last week, it was immediately followed by a point of some clarity, but maybe only clarity for that moment, but it was some clarity that led me to <clears throat> a sense of what I can do. And the conclusion that I drew is I can contribute the best of who I am, the best of what I know, the best of what I have. And part of that has been to think about uh, the, the, the larger, um, the, the, the larger thread that might be at play here. You know, I'm not being very clear about this, but there's so much chat about all of the uh, dealing with the, uh, the, the changing rapid cycle of adaptation. And what I keep looking for is, but what's constant? What is there that we can rely on? It's always been there. Uh, it's still there. It's maybe there in greater supply than we are willing to acknowledge. And what if we trust that? And so part of what makes me feel a little guilty is because I've been riding that line of thinking and it's leading me um, not to jump past the emergency of the moment, right, right. but to have kind of, a, I don't know, a, a, a spiritual uh, belief that this will pass and then we continue on. And what does that look like? And so that's been the part that I've been trying to think about. That's been the part I've been trying to um, get my mind around. And that's where I want to try to contribute for those people that are leading themselves, teams, organizations, communities, and so that we can continue to draw strength from one another. It just uh, is an affirmation, a reaffirmation of what I've long believed, um, but am seeing now in such a, a tremendous array, thank goodness, is the amount of rapid prototyping that is taking place often out of pure necessity. But when you think about the front line, you know what your daughter is doing, no doubt, uh, even though Ohio hasn't been uh, hit like the coasts yet. Yet, yet, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, they have the, uh, we, we, you, have the luxury of being in a, a little bit of a later wave so that there's more time to prepare Right. But when that surge comes and overwhelms the resources, to see the story after story of uh, 3D printing that is creating the uh, pieces for machines, to see the, the uh, level of innovation that has happened, literally kitchen sink innovation around uh, personal protective equipment, uh, to thinking about harnessing the core of engineers to create hospitals out of convention centers, and the list goes on and on and on. I just, I am so um, uh, awed and at the same time inspired by that level of rapid prototyping. 
And you know, when I when I when I was trying to talk about not wanting to appear to be looking past the enormity of the challenge, what I am also trying to do is observe and study what is the best of what I'm seeing right now that we can take with us in the future. And that right. prototyping is a perfect example. Yeah, I'm really with you that about the creativity, social innovation, uh, uh, and really kind of the question of how do we all get along together in a different, better way than maybe we ever did before, the political divide and other chasms that we face. And is this going to be a time that we actually learn something that gets carried forward? Not just how to react to a crisis, but how we bring this into our lives in everyday life. Um, I think the other part of it to me is when you talk about the, the prototyping and innovation is I think I'm looking at myself. And I, was, I can't even say so much my family, but myself taking the responsibility for that for how can I innovate? How can I rethink? How can I, I think you said earlier about how this is a time to question assumptions. And I think that's exactly right. And what I'm really getting to Gary is I think it's about, some of it is relearning what's really important to sustain myself in an optimal way when there's stress. So we know exercise, sleep, what we eat to nourish ourselves, social interaction, that these things are uh, crucial. And I think I've redoubled my efforts. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Um, even if it's just for five or 10 minutes to be outdoors instead of indoors. Um, I think that I'm watching out for pollutants so that if we're cooking something with oil, that the uh, fan is really on to make sure it's, so that a respiratory health is being attended to, to some degree too. And I think uh, upping the walking and the cardio kinds of things, thinking and wanting to keep uh, the respiratory system as healthy as possible. Um, Cause I, I'm also big into the supplements and things like that and using food as, as uh, medicine, as nutrition. So I'm really paying attention more and more to that aspect too. Um, but boy, I'm just trying not to live in fear, but being vigilant and alert. We have a nephew who spent 10 years in uh, Suzhou, Suzhou, China, uh, and he's uh, married a Chinese woman. They had a son last uh, fall, late last fall. And so he was right in the first wave of this. And he has been regularly updating us, and he he uh, uploaded a little uh, video clip, uh, probably I don't know, sixty days ago, and uh, was the first time that he was allowed to go outside. And of course, they they were pretty strict about allowing. Uh, anybody to go outside and you had to have your temperature taken before you went out your temperature taken before you came back in but he went outside uh, with a mask and uh, he was holding his phone and he was uh, videoing and he paused and he said you see that You hear that? And of course, all we heard were birds singing, and all he was showing us was a clear blue sky. And then he pointed the phone at himself and he said, We don't ever get to see or hear that. Oh. So, this idea of pollutants and, and just the idea of where there is tragedy, there is also beauty. And what he was able to do was see it because he didn't have to keep his eyes down and uh, dodging people in a busy thoroughfare. He was able to walk and look up and uh, hear birds singing. And uh, it was just a you know, it was one of those moments of 
uh, goosebumps where you just say, yes, that too is there. Yes, and always was, but the, I'm appreciating the slowing down and noticing things that might be overlooked otherwise. So I want to sit with it a little bit more. Yeah. It feels like it's potentially really big, but I'm not sure if it's big just for me or if it's, you know, it's, it's big on a bigger scale. But like you, I, I'm drawn to saying, what is it that I want to know more about that this yes. moment is presenting yes. to me okay. if I can see it? Yeah, actually you helped clarify for me a lot when you said this moment. It's not what is the timeless question for the next few months. I mean, that's fine. It's what is it for today and tomorrow when you can look back later and say, well, this was the question we were asking at 10 days or 21 days into whatever it is. And actually one that is kind of emerging now as you spoke was, what is it that the universe or the higher power or the spiritual realm, what is it that is the message there? or the question, or whatever. What is it? Because this is something that's operating at a very, not a metaphysical level. I think you would feel that. And, and I don't know that I can go any further than that, but to just lift it to that, this is really a time of consequence and significance. And what's being asked of us, maybe, and then my, my, hand, my mind just goes back to hand washing and isolating and so forth. But maybe that's it just at this stage. And, and what you just did, which was you connected, you reached out to me. And I thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. So let, let's, to put on that positive one, take the last few words you said. How proud will we be of, and we were talking about some of the... But the same question can still be, what can we do that we will feel proud of in the future? And that's what we're really yeah. talking about. Yeah. Right? Thank you, Jim. Why don't we leave it there for right For now. now. Let's try to do this uh, <laughs> every day. Huh? All right. <laughs>